Here at the SME ICC Conference and Expo in Singapore, we've been gathering comments from delegates about payment conduct of their customers. And Simon Littlewood, we found a number, a variety of comments. Uh, you just broadly fitting into two camps. There are those delegates who've come and said that yes, they are having problems. These are the excuses that they often hear for, from customers for delaying payment. But we've also had delegates who've come and said they don't have any problem at all. All of their customers are paying their invoices on time. Do you think there might be an industry where that's actually true? No, I don't. I mean, having worked for hundreds and hundreds of companies over many decades, unless it's a business model where you're automatically paid in cash. So any, any company that offers open credit to its customers will experience late payment from time to time. As a point of reference, I can tell you that the very best companies that I've worked with, Six Sigma companies who take this incredibly seriously and have in place all the things that we at Riava would regard as essential to an effective billing and collections process, typically still have two to three percent of overdues. That's about as good as you can get it. Okay, right. so it, it and most companies is much much higher than that. Yes. So in other words, if you've come by our exhibition stand and you've said that you have absolutely no problems with customers, chances are maybe you just don't want to say so in public. Maybe you worried that your customer might find out that you've been talking about. Well, but this is this particular mindset is a close relative of the sales mindset that says I do not want to have any conversation with my customer that is going to upset him because I want him to go on buying my product. Which is a bit foolish because if he's not paying you for the product, it's not clear that he's much of a customer. You know? So our view is have the right conversation, have it early, have it often. The customer knows he's supposed to pay you. It's not a secret. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't think he's getting it for free. Or maybe he does if you haven't bothered to ask. Uh, he doesn't think he's getting it for free. So at the end of the day, have that conversation and be open. If you start getting into a situation where you're so terrified that you will lose sales by even mentioning the fact that the invoice needs to be paid, you are on a downward path. Right. And so in a way, uh, appearing on camera might just be the thing to put you to the test. If you're not comfortable saying on camera some of the excuses that you're hearing or even admitting that, yeah, there are some customers who keep delaying payment and they leave us hanging, then you should have a moment of introspection, that's what you're saying. Well, it's, it's, it's a cultural confusion. Uh, you know, it, it's built from the mistaken notion that you can only say nice, positive things to somebody with whom you want a sustained commercial relationship. And that's patently not true. What's good in a relationship is what we call moments of truth. And a moment of truth is where you have a difficult spot and you commit yourself to helping your customer through it, whatever it is, whether it's a supply challenge, a pricing challenge, a product challenge. And the way you handle moments of truth is critical, but in order to have them, you have to start by being honest. You have to start by putting out where you have concerns yes. so that he, he, he in exchange will do the same thing, yeah? So never be afraid of having an open and honest conversation with your customer about the fundamentals of your commercial relationship. Yes, and, and of course in Asia, where people are always very keen to uh, preserve face both for themselves and the customer, would you agree that that's a culturally a more difficult conversation? I think to have? it's a more difficult conversation to have. It's also um, very often in many companies where you have a legacy culture where the sales guy does all the selling and his, his language is bye 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 we're wonderful we're wonderful we're wonderful we love you we love you we love you would you like to go to the karaoke on saturday if that's if that's his attitude it's it's very often perceived as being very hard to switch to a and by the way we do expect to be paid on time so 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 as we've said repeatedly the messages around product quality service discipline around payment and delivery and all the other things need to come very early on in the relationship they need to be reinforced and they need to be consistently communicated by everyone that has an interaction with the customer. But is, is culture a, a legitimate excuse to not have those moments of truth, to kind of sweep things no. under the carpet? No, it isn't. I mean, it, it, might, it might make it harder, but the fact of the matter is that there are many, many companies in Asia that are extremely good and disciplined. And the interesting thing is, because we've talked about this before, contrary to the perception that many, that many have, it is not the companies that are the largest that always get paid on time. 
often companies that are smaller get paid quicker than the bigger companies. Why is that? Well, because of the way that they treat the question and the level of attention that they pay to it and the consistency with which they communicate certain messages to their customers. What if, for cultural reasons, uh, you say, you know, we don't want to have these moments of truth. We'd much rather just have a nice, happy relationship with the customer, never have these difficult conversations because they're just very uncomfortable for everybody. Well, what if happens you have, then? If you have high margins and your business is growing rapidly, then maybe you can get away with that for a while. But the fact of the matter is that you're still leaving money on the table. Uh, and you're also losing an opportunity to strengthen your relationship with the customer because when the chips are down and the market starts to shrink or it gets harder to compete, what's going to differentiate you? It's your ability to have an honest conversation with the customer, understand his issues, uh, understand his points of pain and show that you're committed to addressing them as opposed to the other supplier who, want, who says give me the order, give me the order, give me the order. Even if he says and I don't care when you pay me, that ultimately is not enough, not when there are other issues. You know? Yes. So in other words, it is possible to have that honesty with yourself, honesty with our camera for that matter, but also honesty with the customer in a way that's not uncomfortable, that these moment of, moments of truths are actually positive things, not face destroying things. Yes. I mean, that's absolutely true. On the other hand, if you're moving from a culture where you're not used to having those conversations to one where you're trying to have them, that has to be managed very carefully. One of the things that we do, as you know, is we help suggest ways that you can tee up that conversation, ways that you can respond to customer feedback in a different way from the way that you've responded to it in the past. You know, payment doesn't matter, we'll give you whatever you want, bloody, bloody, blah, yeah? Um, so, yes, you can do it. No, it's not always simple, and it requires that you think about it and you build the confidence of your, particularly your commercial team, if they're not used to having that discussion, so that they can change the way that they deal with particular situation. That requires coaching. It requires that you define um, the likely responses that you're going to get from the customer, and that you learn different ways to, to deal with them. You know, because if not, hu and human beings being what they are, you'll always fall back on the same answer that you used yeah. to use, right? Yeah. So, so we we typically use case studies. We use live chat, we put people in a room, we make, we make a bit of fun around it. What if he says this? Or what if he did that? And what's interesting about that approach, you know, which is based on um, workshops, is that when certain individuals in your organization start to understand this and they start to get results, customers start to respond to the fact that we're taking a renewed interest in their concerns, then it'll catch fire. Right. Yeah. And in the meantime, you can go and follow our Twitter feed and send us the lamest payment excuses that you have heard. Clearly, we'll know you by your Twitter handle, but you don't have to mention the customer uh, by, by name. We're interested to surface some of those payment excuses that uh, you've heard in your time in business. Thank you, Simon.